Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. We were just discussing the tech from the M50, the brand new Canon M50, which is a really cool camera, and I'm really looking forward to reviewing it. It's on its way. And the tech that's coming from that into the 90D, because I'm still expecting to see a 90D. I'm almost 100% positive we'll still get one from Canon. I don't think you're going to see their DSLR lineup totally evaporate overnight, even though they're concentrating on mirrorless now at the moment. The 90D, I'm sure, will be a camera that will still exist at least for a few years. Um, that level of camera, that spot in the lineup, that the ADD currently holds, the new 90D when it comes will replace. Uh, it's still going to be available. I think that's a camera that will be slow to disappear from the DSLR lineup, even as Canon makes the shift to mirrorless. So we went over some things. It was about five things, I think, that we will see from the M50 tech-wise that are sure to be in the 90D. However, the 90D, as we discussed, will be at a higher price point. The ADD was announced February 18th, 2016. It was announced at 1199. That was the MSRP for body only, 1799 with the venerable Canon 18 to 135 kit lens, which, as you know, I'm a big fan of. It's one of my top four best value lenses from Canon. So I think my best guess is that we can expect to see Canon maintain this price point on this level of camera. So the 90D will come out most likely at this same level, 1199 for the body, 1799 for the kit and it'll probably have the latest version of the 18 to 135 which is probably the usm lens um so that's what i would expect to see price wise so with the 90d being at that we're going to have those five points from the m50 those five tech levels namely the biggest one there was the 4k but we're going to see other stuff in the 90d that is not in the m50 advantages that the 90d will give you the the bigger juice, the more juice packed into the 90D that you get for the price point that it's going to be. Because remember, the M50 is at $899 with the kit lens. I've made a list of, I think we got close to 10 things here that you can expect to see in the 90D that the M50 will not have. First up is the battery. We've got a bigger, fatter battery in the ADD. You can expect to see a similar iteration of that, if not the same battery. It's been around for a while. It'll probably be the same one or just a new version, like an A version of it in the 90D, and that's going to give us a longer battery life, both for stills, number of shots you can do, and also for video, and just for time using the uh, live view and whatnot. So you can, that's going to be an advantage that a lot of people will like over the M50. Now, the M50 is a smaller and lighter camera. The 90D is going to be probably the same size and roughly the same weight and whatnot as the 80D, but one of the advantages you get with that slightly bigger camera is the bigger battery and the longer battery life. So that's the first one. Second point is the native lens selection. Yes, with the M50, you can get the EOS M adapter and you can use the whole Canon lineup, but you got to have the adapter and they're not native lenses to that camera. The M series is, is the native lenses are the M series of lenses and you need the adapter in order to start using the EFS lenses and the other Canon lenses. So... The 90D does have the advantage of those wide, wide, beautiful selection of Canon lenses that are native to it without any adapter. For some people, that'll be an issue. For some people, it's not. The adapter isn't expensive. I think it's around $199, but you don't need an adapter on the 90D. You just natively get to use their existing full catalog. The next item on the list is the top deck display. The 80D has that. The 90D will continue to have that. It will be a similar looking body. And we don't have that on the M50. It's a smaller, lighter body, and that's one of the things we sacrifice. And, and, and by, in all fairness, a lot of mirrorless cameras don't have a top deck display. Fourth on the list is the headphone jack. We have that on the current 80D. The 90D, you can expect to still maintain that. And it's something that people that shoot video really like. And it's a something that can be a deal killer for video shooters. It really enables run and gun and less gear and getting on site and setting up quick and being able to have that without using additional accessories for audio. We don't have that in the M50. We will have that in the 90D as we did in the 80D. Next up is the shot buffer. We've got a deeper JPEG shot buffer and a deeper RAW shot buffer on the ADD in comparison to the current M50. I think you can probably expect to see that widened even more in the 90D offering. In other words, I think you'll have an even better shot buffer on the 90D than you did on the ADD, which was already better than the M50s. So expect to see a deeper buffer for both JPEG and RAW on the 90D, and that will be an advantage over the M50. And for some people, you add all these together, and again, it's another tipping factor. 
Another key point is the faster shutter. The ADD currently is a one eight thousandth shutter. The M50 has a one four thousandth. Uh, for a lot of people, that's a, that can be a big deal. Outside, bright light, shooting situations, advantage ADD, and I think we're going to continue to see that in the 90D. And again, it's a fairly big point for some people, and when you add it in with all the other points, it's going to push you to a 90D over an M50 if that's the type of thing that matters to you. The next point is the autofocus system. Now, we can expect to see at least a level of autofocus in the ADD as well as the current amazing dual pixel AF. Now, we have dual pixel AF in the M50, and we have a different type of autofocus system. I think it's, what is it, 143 points, focus points? Yes, 143 AF points is what Canon bills the M50 at. Does that make it a better autofocus system than the ADD? I'm not sure. It's a different autofocus system. The ADD has 45 cross-type AF points. Very strong offering in an autofocus system. Is it better? I haven't shot them both side by side. When I get the M50 in, I'll have a much better idea. Uh, however, I think the 90D is going to maintain at least the level of ADD. If not, maybe give us an even more advanced autofocus system, a bump up from the ADDs, and that will also uh, help to differentiate it when it's going to be at that higher price point. So that's a possible is a better AF system in the 90D than even what was in the 80D. One of the strengths that the M50 has that we're going to see coming to the 90D is 4K. But that begs the question, what level of 4K? Are we going to get the same 4K with the heavy crop factor, the 2.5, 2.56 times crop factor for 4K? Or are we going to see less of a crop factor and perhaps a better Kodak and more options? It's possible, and that could be, again, part of Canon's strategy to differentiate the lineup. The other thing we could see is, pertaining to the 4K, is we could see a better 4K in the sense that dual pixel AF could work with the 4K in the 90D. We know dual pixel AF can work in 4K because we have it in the 5D Mark IV, and it works great. Canon has just kind of made this decision that that's not something they're going to give us at an 899 price point with the M50. They may give it to us at the 90D's price point. It's a significantly higher price point in the lineup, and it could be the first APS-C 4K offering from Canon that has dual pixel AF with 4K, and that would be very significant to a lot of people, including myself. My last two points are both things that don't occur in the M50 and I think might occur for the first time in the 90D. We've got in-camera panoramas. Could be an option. It's a small thing, but some people like to use them, and it's kind of a neat uh, option to have. And we could see that happen in the 90D, the ability to shoot an in-camera panoramic. And that would be a, a neat option, a nice option to have. The other thing is built-in GPS. We don't have that in the M50. Actually, I don't think we have that in the ADD currently right now. So it could be just another way to pack the 90D a little bit without being overly threatening to Canon and give us that extra value at the price point it's going to be at. So there you go, folks. Those are, what I guess it was about 10 features I think you're going to see in the 90D that aren't in the M50. 10 reasons that the 90D may be a better value for you at a higher price point than the current M50, which looks amazing in its own right. What do you guys think? What do you think of these features? Are any of them deal breakers? Which ones are more important to you? Um, do you think I've left something out that we could expect to see in the 90D that is not in the 80D or in the M50? Let me know in the comments below. Let's discuss it. The 90D is a very interesting topic, a very interesting camera to me. We don't have it yet. I do expect it out soon, at least an announcement, and I'm just curious to see where Canon feels they want to position this camera. We know where it sits in the lineup for DSLRs, but when I say where they're going to position it, I'm wondering how they're going to position it technically. How strong of an offering is this camera going to be in comparison to the M50? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's discuss it. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at ArtOfTheImage.com.